So I feel like recently I had a bit of an epiphany. For a long time on this channel, when we talk about heroes and balance and things like that, I always bring up pick rates and viability and the meta. But over the past few weeks, I've really been thinking about this topic and realized that it doesn't matter. The meta doesn't matter for a vast majority of the player base and likely for a vast majority of you out there watching this video. So I'd like to define the meta, talk about why it's something that I've always fixated on, and then wrap up with why I've decided it's not a big deal and we shouldn't care about it anymore. Or at least I should maybe stop focusing on it as often as I have in the past. So meta is essentially defined as a game within a game. Basically, when it comes to something like Overwatch, what are the best heroes to be played? What are the best potential picks that you could do? And a lot of times we come to the conclusion of what this is based on high level play. When watching pro streams or professional tournaments, uh, VODs of scrims, things like that. What are the heroes and what are the team compositions that the best players in Overwatch are choosing? We try to decipher why they're making those choices and then try to carry that information into our own game. But the truth of the matter is, as I'm sure many of you out there know, and as I'm finally coming around, uh, coming to terms with, I've, I've always known this, but I'm finally realizing that maybe my, my fixation on it isn't necessary and maybe we shouldn't, we just shouldn't talk about it so often. Because what the pro players do won't translate to 99% of your matches. Those of you out there, unless you have the aim and uh, coordination and team play of these professional players and their teams, their choices and their reasoning behind those choices won't translate to your games. And it won't matter. The meta won't matter. And it doesn't. Even me, I'm playing in mid to high diamond. My McCree isn't hitting 70 to 80% of his shots. Our healers don't have the best situational awareness. We don't have amazing shot callers and team synergy. So those choices, why they pick McCree, why they don't pick Take mercy, none of that matters. It really doesn't. So I'm gonna stop fixating on it. We're gonna stop talking about it as often. I do expect that I'll still bring it up time and again because I do enjoy the competitive side of this game. Whenever there's been an opportunity to get an advantage in a multiplayer game, I, I take it because that's part of the competition. But once more, most of my audience, most of you watching this video and myself included, only being a diamond level player, I'm not master, grandmaster, or top 500. What those players are picking and the reasoning behind it, it doesn't apply to me and it doesn't apply to most of you but at the same time this doesn't mean that i don't think discussion of hero balance and viability and meta and pick rates should never happen because it it should and i probably will still talk about it in the future i think i'm just gonna fixate a little bit less on it and i'd like you guys to know as well don't stress out about it if you are below master tier and someone in any of your matches is giving you shit for your picks tell them to bugger off because they're in that same tier with you so they're not exactly pro level players either and they could probably pick other heroes if anything you should feel bad for them they're restricting themselves oh how sad <laughs> <laughs> unnecessarily so because their gameplay mechanics and awareness isn't at the level that's necessary for this pro meta that they're following so strictly by and i've been guilty of that myself before not shitting on people for picking off meta choices but just you know having that mentality of well i can't play soldier 76 anymore i have to i guess learn how to play mccree and you know maybe i wasn't as good of a mccree as i was a soldier 76 so maybe i would have actually been more effective all of season and two of just continuing to play soldier instead of trying my hand at McCree. Maybe I would have been a better asset to the team. And that ultimately I think is the most important and key thing to realize. Whatever the meta is as it's going to undoubtedly change over the months and years ahead with new heroes being added and balance changes and all of that. Whatever it is, whatever it becomes and whatever people in your games tell you that you should be playing, you realize and try to inform them as well that it doesn't matter what the meta pick is if you're not that great at that hero. You could be much more beneficial and more likely end the game in a win for you if you play a hero that you're better at than a hero that is meta at the moment. And I'm sure some of you out there are saying, well, duh, Force, we've been trying to tell you this for months, or Styloso already told me that meta don't mean beta. And that all may be well and true. And I don't think it's not that I've never known any of this, because I've always been aware. In fact, I've talked about 
about this stuff in videos before. But at the same time, I feel like I have always fixated on it because I so closely follow the professional scene. Don't worry about it. Don't stress out about it. And if anything, I'm going to promise you guys that I'm going to try to make an effort to uh, focus on it a, a wee bit less and just have some more fun with this game. There's no reason to be stressing out over video games and hero picks after all. Jesus. <laughs> all right, everyone, that is going to do it for me here today as we talk about why meta doesn't matter. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you have a good afternoon. And until next time, I'll see you later.